Hey, what's going on everyone? This video, we're gonna be talking about nested function calls and how to understand what's going on. So if you can take a look at this print statement and you can figure out the order of everything and where the parentheses should go, then you should be good. Go ahead and skip on to the next video. However, if you're struggling with balancing your parentheses and figuring out what order things happen, then this is the video for you. So we're also gonna get into some tips and tricks, so stay tuned for those. But let's get started looking at this. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. So pretty much when we run this, we get the value 10, and the actual value that it gives back is irrelevant. I pretty much just nested a bunch of stuff just to get some practice. So when we have nested parentheses, so anytime we have parentheses like this, the thing in the most inner parentheses happens first. So let's take a look at our expression here and try to figure out what's going on. And we'll start here on the left side of this, this plus, starting with this age here. And when we pass something to this string, it creates a new string object from the given object. So this age 15 is converted to a string. So these parentheses are for the string call, then these outer parentheses are for this ID call, which is a function we talked about that returns the identity of an object. And then lastly, we have these parentheses here, which, it, which includes this plus operation, math.floor 2.6. Once those two numbers are added together, they are converted to a string, which is then passed to the length function, which is then passed to the print function. So if you needed to break this out into the steps, it's gonna look something like this. So we have the age, and then we convert that to a string. So we pass age in, and this is going to be age string just for, we're gonna need a bunch of variables here, so just follow along here. So that's the first thing we did. And then we got the ID of the age string. So that's going to be ID of age underscore string. Then that whole thing is added with the math.floor. So we could just create another variable other and say math.floor, pass in 2.6, add those up. So we'll say ID age of string plus other. That gets passed to string. So one more time, we will say added underscore string and then pass that in like so. And then we get the length of that like so. And then lastly, we print that. So we say print and we pass in length like so. Ooh, okay, running that, we get the same exact value. So you can see how nesting is actually a lot cleaner because this, reading this, there's so many different variables and it would be really hard to go through this and follow. Although you can see step by step what happens, but this is a little bit more uh, concise. All right, so that was pretty obnoxious. However, I think we figured out how to dissect something like this. You basically start on the inside and then anytime there is an operator such as a plus, you usually go left to right. However, there are some operators that go right to left, but we haven't touched any of those yet, so you don't even have to worry about that. And you keep going out and out a layer until you reach the final function. So that concludes the next section. The next video, we're going to pretty much review everything we've talked about from the last review and just go through each of the examples real quickly just to make sure we're all on the same page before going to the next section.